uh, myself Mahesh, uh, uh, how we run 4.5 years of experience in Java JT. So now we are discussing about Java. So what is Java? Um, what exactly Java is? So what are the advantages Java is going to provide you? Okay. So compared to other programming languages. So just come to Java. So Java is developed by uh, James Gosling in the year 1991. So in the year 1991. So by Sun Microsystem in USA. So earlier it was owned by Sun Microsystem. Now it's with Oracle Corporation. So now it's owned by Oracle Corporation. So when it comes, so before learning in Java, we will go and see history of Java. So what is that? So as I explained, which is uh, developed by James Gosling and his team. So when it comes to his team, we, there are Patrick Norton and Chris Worth, Ed Frank and Mike Shedden. So why they come to Java? So earlier there was C and C++. So why they choose Java? There are already C and C++ exist. Why they choose Java? Because these programs are not portable, are not language independent. So when they are working on Java, so their intention is, hey, they want a software which they develop and that needs to be worked in the TV remotes and embedded system. But they use, they try to use this C, C++. They are not giving enough result. That means, so for suppose, let's take in, uh, let me explain you in understandable language like, so what are the programs you develop in C, C++ once you compile that will give you a file. So if you compile in Windows environment, that file cannot be carried to Linux environment or MacBook. So that is the reason they come with Java, that is platform independent. Okay, that is platform independent. So the main motto to develop Java is platform independent. This is the first and foremost feature why they developed job. Okay, so then what they did. So before going to discuss like uh, compile and interpret, there are a couple of, so right now I am going to skip them, okay, because anyway it's not regular session. So I am going to skip them. So small comparison between Java and C++. So there is no operator overloading concept. So a operator can be used in multiple purpose, so which leads to some confusion. That kind of confusion avoided in Java. No template concept and do not support multiple inheritance. So if you use multiple inheritance, what will, what happened, you know, like uh, at a certain point of time, so if you over, like a class implementing both, uh, implementing or ex sorry, extending both classes. So if you over, like if you're overriding some method, a common method, at that point of time, you don't know which this comes. So it's a small hierarchy, that's fine. So if hierarchy is going on, class A extends B, B extends C, C extends D, D C like that. So if you go like that, at a certain point of time, it is very difficult to identify the hierarchy. So for that reason, they stopped multiple inheritance in Java. No global variables. No global variables. Which means, so you cannot declare anything outside the class. So for example, class followed by the class name. Let's say if class name is A. Everything you have to declare inside the class. So you cannot declare anything outside the class. Okay? And no header files. Here you have all imports. So no header files. Because header files, what it will do, you know? Uh, when you say hash include some std.h, conio.h, that entire library needs to be copied into your program. 
So there you will get some problems like unnecessary memory concepts. But instead of that, they given import. So whichever class you are working, that class you need to import. Okay, not entire library. So what are the class you are working? That class only you need to import. So there you can reduce memory and only that particular class needs to be imported. Any questions? Then, so first we need to discuss about Java character set. So let's uh, slowly we will learn about Java. Okay, so Java character set, what kind of uh, things we use in Java, then we will go for a program. Okay, Java character set. So what kind of characters it supports? So it supports both Unicode and ASCII code. There are two kinds of course exist Unicode and ASCII code. So that supports both Unicode and as well as ASCII. It supports both Unicode and ASCII code. Sorry, it's ASCII ASCII. So coming to tokens. So there are a couple of Java tokens. They are reserved keyword. First one is reserved keywords. So tokens is the one which helps you to write the program. Okay. What are the reserved keywords? If you take uh, any programming language, some key, I mean some words are registered. That means you cannot use those words for your own purpose. You cannot use those words for your own purpose. Like data types is one of the keywords. Like uh, if all data types. Like I am assuming that you have a little bit of uh, programming knowledge and I am explaining. So if you want in deeper I can provide. So I am assuming that you have little knowledge on CC++ what is data type and then I am going okay like all data types they are in float double so these are the reserved keywords means this int plain int I cannot use anywhere for my own purpose okay some blocks if else for like this there are around 58 words okay there are around 58 words registered for Java so you cannot use them for your own purpose okay and identifiers the next one is identifiers what identifiers will tell you? So this will tell you how to name, how to name your class method variable, how to name class method variable. So there are like a uh, few condition, okay? So in the class name, that might be class name class method and variable sorry class method variable so how to name in this one what kind of characters you can use so you can use any alphabet okay you can use alphanumeric you can use underscores you can use dollar character okay alphabets alphabets and numbers underscore and dollar sign okay you can use them so they cannot be start with 
a digit or number. So it contain alphabet, numbers, underscore, dollar. But it should not start with a number. Like if you take a variable name, like if you say name. So you can say name one, but you cannot say one name. Okay. The second one is wrong. A variable name or class name, method name should not start with letter. Sorry, number or digit okay in Java it is a Java is a case sensitive language okay name does not equal to name or does not equal to n a m b okay all are different Okay, small name or else in simple A does not equal to capital A. Okay, so sm small A is distinct and capital A is different. All are different. Then that can be any length. Variable name can or class name can be any length, but you have to follow appropriate. But suppose if I am representing employee information, you should have class name employee or at least employee details not more than that okay so whenever you are naming you should name professional okay like you should not name whatever you want because if you name something if i read that i should understand if you write a class employee so there you store the employee details so that if i read some if if you write i have i come and read then i will understand it but if I like where I am storing the employee details, but if I name it as something else, X, Y, Z. So if someone come and reads the class X, Y, Z, they don't understand. So they provided you to length can be anything. So you should follow, you can use any alphanumeric. Okay, but it should not start with the number. That can be any length, but again I am saying you that can be any length, but that length should be proper. Okay, then next, naming conventions, how we can write a naming con. So let's see there are uh, variables, methods and uh, class names. So method and variables, methods, naming convention, now we are discussing. naming conventions of method and variable so they should start with small letter start with small letter I will tell you later why they ask for small letter there's a reason okay so but it's not uh, like if you take a variable uh, let's take total if you take total as a variable it should start with small letter and if you take total as a method it should be total okay total as a method in case if there are multiple words like total marks total salary or net salary gross salary if you have two words second word first letter should be capital second word first letter should be capital that is if you say total and marks they are two words right so the proper naming convention is second letter first sorry second word first letter should be capital total marks so if it is a method so you have to give parentheses in case what if you have three words again except first word each words first letter should be capital except first word except first words first letter remaining other words first letter should be capital likes if you have get total 
marks. So it should be get second letter first should be capital total then again next words first letter should be capital like so get total marks it should be like this okay then how to name a class naming a class so class should start with capital letter class name should start with capital letter like hello if you have two words if you have two words second word first letter should be capital like hello and Java again if you have three words and the last word first letter should be capital okay hope you are clear then how to name a constant how to name a constant naming a so constants is nothing but some value defined like if you take a math value pi so somewhere we store 2.3.14 uh, right so that is the constant that value never change so sometimes in application we have to use constants that value never change so for that reason like the constant always max letters constant we should be declared as max capital letters sorry constant should be declared as capital letters constant should contain all capital letters so you can ask me hey Mahesh what if there are two words again so underscore is the separator between words so same thing if you have total value are so you should give total underscore value if you have one more so underscore is the separator are you clear so far Okay, if you have any questions, you can ask me, no problem. Okay, or else if you want me to continue, I will continue. Okay, cool. So, the next one are literals. So, what is literals? So literals are the one like uh, what kind of characters you are using. So digit or integers, they are literals, floating point literals, character literals, string is a literal, believe. So other than that, you cannot use anything. If you take in your daily real, daily life, so you use, you use integers, you use float, you use characters, string, boolean. Other than that, you cannot use anything in your life. So the same thing, you, the literals are available in the programming language as well. So in teacher, so where you can see, one, it starts from zero, there can be negative as well, one comma, two comma, three comma, so on. M, okay, the floating point, floats or that can be called as reals real values or fraction values okay so in general English fractions but uh, we can say that we will say that it's float okay we will say that in float in Java they are like some fraction values okay so some dot should contain okay point some value they are fractions next characters 
only single character. So character, only one letter, A, B, C, like that. Next, string. There, so it's string, not string. String, like multiple characters. Hello, if you put into double quotes, that will be a string. Okay, the quotes and all those things we will discuss later, but you can say set of characters is known as a string. Okay, string can be a word or a statement or whatever. That is a string. And next one is boolean you can say yes or no that is modified and we can say that true or false so in general language we'll say yes or no but when it comes to java that should be true or false so these are the things you use in your real time the same literals are given in Java. So there are a couple of operators they given. So right now I just go through the list out the operators but when it comes to more we can discuss more because uh, to discuss them I need to uh, go through uh, because we need to learn some programming knowledge. Arithmetic as you know like press minus and all those things we do. Uh, assignment operator equal to so you are assigning something increment so how much each, you want to increment each time relation operator so if yes do something if no do, or less than or equal to greater than or equal to comparison checking for the object checking for the same okay we are comparing bitwise so where I can check uh, some conditions okay logical and logical or that's logical Ternary. So this is something new. If this satisfies, do this. Else, do something else in a single. Special operators like dot, parenthesis. They comes to special operators. So don't worry. We have a topic called operators. There we discuss more these things. Okay. So let's discuss about data types. So if you take any programming language. Okay data types are basic so if you take what kind of data types you use in the real time the same thing just now we discussed literals right they are data types as well primitives and non primitives so what is the primitive and what is the non primitive primitive is the one which stores only single value in simple primitive contain single value whereas non primitive contain collection of sing collection of values okay so primitive like complex non complex is non non complex is the one like straightforward value complex in the sense where it's combined multiple values so if you know XML, I, you understand that. In other words, primitive in the sense which contains straightforward value. So non-primitive is some values grouped together. Okay. So when it comes to primitive, what are the types again? So let's go with primitive. So let me take a draw. Primitive. So primitives contain again. numeric and non numeric okay numeric and non numeric so when it comes to numeric again we have a couple of types so can you tell any of you numerics so numerics are that can be integers Int 
integer 1 2 3 4 5 6 and floating so that can be floating like where some real constant 1.1 1.2 1.3 .1 those things when it comes to non numeric you have two things character care and boolean yes or no okay again when it comes to integer you have few things in java they are byte short long based on the range we will use this one okay and when it comes to float float and you have double okay so these are the data types byte short int long float double char boolean these are the data types available in java okay so uh uh, Sri Lakshmi, uh, like I'm running out of time, so I need to take other class at 10 o'clock. So, shall we wind up here? Yeah, because I thought of it's 9 o'clock, but we started at 9.30. I need to take other class. I can't hear you still. Can you speak something? Okay, no problem. Okay, that's fine. So when can I expect response from you guys? Bye. So this is how my training, and uh, what I will do, like uh, I will, I will use Eclipse only. So uh, very. No, okay, that's fine. Today's that's fine. So let me explain about my training features. So I will use uh, Eclipse only, not command line per like not on Notepad and this. So nowadays everyone use Eclipse. So I teach you concept very clear. So like this, and uh, I provide you the document and examples. So I will record every day session from my side, so with a clear uh, like audio and video and I will give it to you. I will through share to Google Drive. Or else if you want me to upload to your Dropbox so that there I will upload. Okay? Yeah. So that's it. So I, if you want, I can train on like few things. You can go through my website, javaitraining.com. So I train all of them, Java related things. Thank you. I'm signing off. Bye-bye.